Hello everybody, welcome back, and this is going to be part two of my Snakes of Missouri series. Uh, this was going to be about timber rattlesnakes and copperheads that are found in the state of Missouri. So we'll start with copperheads, and I would say the most common place that I found copperheads in the state is in open, grassy, or weedy fields, uh, hiding under rocks or other objects. And uh, they're pretty common. I would say they're one of the more common snakes in the state to find in that area. Uh, but that's just one of many places you can find them. But I would say that is probably the most common area that I found them in. And keep in mind, whenever you turn over a copper object and you see a copperhead, they're often not alone. Um, not always, but it is quite common to find uh, two or more uh, hiding underneath the same object. Uh, seen below these two, I flipped under a single large rock. Another good place to look for them is in piles of junk, uh, underneath boards, or pieces of tin. They like to be underneath there because they can hide. Uh, particularly some things like tin will also transfer heat to them during cooler seasons or whenever they're needing additional heat. Also keep in mind there's a lot of mice to be found underneath of those boards. For example, here's a little uh, baby mouse I found in the pile of junk uh, that I just showed. Keep an eye out around the edges of piles of junk and uh, rocks and things too, though. Although they're often underneath of those uh, objects, they can be uh, next to them or out sitting next to them too. Here's an example of a fairly large copperhead that was sitting next to the pile of junk previously shown. And uh, the next couple of slides will show other copperheads that were found uh, inside of that pile of junk as I begin pulling the boards back and looking through there. Also right by that pile of junk, I found a little neonite underneath a tiny little piece of wood. So um, sometimes, especially if you're in a good area, even a small piece that you might not think could have much is, is worth at least a quick look. Usually tin works best in full sun, but here's one I actually found in a, uh, a pretty wooded area, so it wasn't getting much sunlight, but still it was a uh, copperhead was either using it as a hiding place or was looking for rodents under it or some combination of the two. Sometimes I've seen copperheads leaving their uh, hiding places right as the uh, right as we change uh, from uh, daylight into evening, and um, here's one that's coming out from underneath of a piece of uh, it's actually a piece of uh, like a telephone pole. So once you get into June, uh, July, and August, those are hot and dry months in Missouri, and you're probably going to start having a lot less luck with flipping things like king snakes and milk snakes. But all through the summer, um, the rock crevices are still good places to look for pit vipers. Uh, the next few slides, I'm going to go through some of the mini copperheads I've seen hanging out in uh, in wood uh, or sorry in rock crevices. Um, you can just be walking around, just keep an eye out under the rock crevices. You, a lot of times you can see them just kind of at the edge of it. You might have to um, to peer into some of the darker crevices, but a lot of times you can just see them hanging out like you'll see in the next in these uh, slides. And the final thing I want to say about copperheads is you just never know where they might turn up. So don't, don't ever count any place out or assume you won't see them there. Although the places I described previously are the places where they're most likely to be found. Um, the example, the one on the screen now, I found this one. It was deep in the shade underneath a piece of tin that you know I was just using for a, a hiding spot. And uh, here's another one that I found when I was actually looking for salamanders in a in a wet, uh, underneath a, a just a soaked wet yeah, piece of wood. Very you know ground was very moist and it was you know early in the season. I'm assuming these guys were um, just kind of making their way around at the beginning of the year. They're making their way from away from wherever they had hibernated at. Okay, so next we're going to talk about the timber rattlesnakes. Uh, the timber rattlesnakes are uh, present in many areas of Missouri. Um, I don't think they're rare. Uh, they are more localized than the uh, copperheads, although you can find them together and they may occur in the same places. Copperheads are just simply more numerous and occur in, in, more, in uh, more locations, uh, so you're just much more likely to come across them. Uh, the timber rattlesnake, like I said, I wouldn't say it's rare, but it is a little bit more... Uh, localized. You're going to find these um, 
you know, they're going to do good in areas where there's, there's a lot of habitat, uh, preserved, uh, unfragmented habitat would be ideal for them. Oh, they can persist at least for, you know, some period of time in, in smaller habitats. So you just never know. But uh, you're looking for rocky hillsides, um, places like that um, tend to be good places to look. So just like we talked about with um, copperheads, with the timber rattlesnake, don't assume if you see one that there's only just one. Often they hang out in pairs, and where you see one, you may end up finding uh, more than one. They'll even share crevices together. Um, so you can find them uh, communally like that. They could either be mating or they could be um, just if the females may be uh, sharing a, uh, um, an area together or rookery together. Um, another exciting thing about the timber rattlesnake is the the, uh, the neonates do hang out with the parents at least for a short time, and you may find the uh, the uh, uh, neonate uh, timber rattlesnakes hanging around those same areas for you know a short time after uh, birth is given. One other thing to keep in mind about the timber rattlesnakes, though, is um, they'll also uh, head out into, um, you know, weedy areas and forested areas in search of, uh, you know, foraging. And I think the grass probably provides some camouflage, too, for them to hide in. So um, when you're in timber rattlesnake habitat, um, you know, keep an eye out. Um, you know, not only under uh, around uh, down trees and things, but also when you're walking in weedy fields uh, and surrounding their habitat, you know, keep an eye out for them there too. You may be able to find one. Here's one. I only found it because it, it made a, a it started rattling. And I was able to pull the weeds back and see it. So, um, you know, if you're going to walk through those weedy fields looking for them, uh, you may want to get you a pair of what's called snake boots. They're um, uh, a boot that comes up fairly high and may provide some measure of protection. Um, against, uh, you know, if, should it happen to strike. In my case, I've never had any venomous snake uh, strike my boot ever, so it's kind of been a little bit of a waste of money, and they're a little bit uncomfortable, so you might want to keep that in mind. But if you're particularly nervous or fearful uh, about these snakes, then you might want to wear that and just, you know, watch where you put your hands as an extra uh, precaution.